we shall pray very specially for the transformation of our country, Nigeria. What our young people are out on the streets day and night for is that if they have not enjoyed Nigeria, that their children, their own children, will have a better Nigeria. May the Lord hear our prayer. Between Friday and today, there has been vigils, prayer vigils across the country. And as you can see, there has not been any destruction of public property or looting or whatever. It has been well organized. We thank God for our young people. We thank God for our children. The mistakes we have made, that they are not making those mistakes. They are planning for a better future. May the Lord grant success to this endeavor. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us now acknowledge our sins and be sorry for them. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to save us sinners. Christ, have mercy. You sit at the Father's right hand continually pleading for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Gloria, Gloria, Glory is your name, O oh Lord. Sing glory, Gloria, Glory is your name, O oh Lord. Glory is your name, O oh Father above. Glory is your name, Jesus Christ the Son. Glory is your name, O Holy Ghost. Glory is your name, O Lord. Sing glory. Gloria. Gloria. Glory is your name, O Lord. Glory is your name, Creator God. Glory is your name, Messiah Lord. Glory is your name, O Holy Spirit. Glory is your name, O Lord. Sing glory. Sing glory. Gloria. Gloria. Glory is your name, O Lord. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Isaiah. 
Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and uncover the loins of kings, to open the doors before him that gates may not close. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other besides me. There is no God. I clothe you, though you do not know me, that men may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. The word of the Lord. Give the Lord glory and power. Oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the people. For the Lord is great and highly to be praised, to be feared above all gods. For the gods of the nations are not. It was the Lord who made the heaven. Give the Lord, you families of peoples, give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Bring an offering and enter his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Oh, tremble before him all the earth. Say to the nations, the Lord is king. He will judge the people in fairness. A reading from the beginning of the first letter of St. Paul, the Thessalonian. Paul, Silvanus and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for you all, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know Brethren, beloved by God, that he has chosen you. For our gospel came to you, not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and its full conviction. The word of the Lord. And Hallelujah, 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 I will sing unto the Lord, hallelujah, 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 I will sing unto the Lord. shine as light in the world holding fast the word of life sing hallelujah
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, the Pharisees went and took counsel how to entangle Jesus in his talk. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and you teach the way of God truthfully and care for no man. For you do not regard the position of men. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the money for the tax. And they brought him a coin. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. The Gospel of the Lord. Let me begin by acknowledging the enormous courage, ingenuity, and technical, technological sophistication of our young people who have for nearly two weeks sustained uh, end SARS, end police brutality, end uh, bad governance, end corruption. Uh, the list is expanding, right? Who have sustained this protest peaceful, largely peaceful protest for nearly two weeks. Let's give them a round of applause. Some of us have been involved in this enterprise for more than three decades, for more than 30 years. And uh, it is only, it is a matter of joy to see that our young people are taking it on and as they are taking it on, um, they are doing it with the kind of sophistication that we were not able to apply 30, 20, 10 years ago. Um, some of you have heard that uh, they are using technology, making optimum use of technology to the extent that they have no problem with funding. There is no money bag that is funding them. It is called crowdfunding. And the crowdfunding is coming from everywhere within this country and from their friends and colleagues and Nigerian young people overseas. Within an hour, I am told, within an hour after a particular payment platform was set up, they got $10,000 within one hour. And they have been raising more money and they are feeding themselves. The people are cooking and taking their they are making sacrifices, volunteering. They even have galleries for charging phones, which somebody made and brought. They are renting toilets that they are taking to the site. They are cleaning after them, you know, after eating. They clean everywhere to show the kind of country they want to see. They are campaigning for the welfare of the police, for better salaries for the police. They know that to give 50000 to a man to guard the society and give him a gun and you expect him to live on 50000 naira, they know that it is unjust, it is unfair, it is cruel, and they are campaigning for better uh, um, welfare for our security forces. So this is not against police per se. This is against all that is wrong in our society. And... The sophistication that they have put into this, I observe that the young people have solutions to a lot of our problems. It is time for us to step back and let them run this society. Within 24 hours, they are finding solutions. 
There was a payment platform that was set up and was blocked by I don't know who. Within one hour, they found another solution. It means that our young people can find solutions to our problem. I mean, those of you who are familiar with the writings of Ken Robinson, a British educator in England, he says, who told you, 50, 60, 70-year-old teacher, that you know how to teach a five-year-old who will be alive in 70 years' time? What they need to be alive in 70 years' time, God has put into their brains. Who told you that you know exactly what the child will need in 50 years' time to, to survive? What they will need to survive in the world of 70 years' time, the Lord has put into their brains. And so, the young people are saying, I saw some of the posters, Sorosuke, speak out. The young people now want to be heard. They don't want to be victims anymore. They want to set the agenda. And we, who are leaders, we are often dig uh, analog. And our young people that are digital, they want to dictate the pace. Because they have the solutions. May this protest remain peaceful. May the authorities never be tempted to crush this by any means in any forceful manner. May everyone that is responsible, may we take the part of dialogue. May we for once listen to our young people as they prepare for a better society for themselves and their children. Amen. Lead questions for today. Question number one. What is the link, if any, between the first reading, Isaiah 45, 1 to 6, and the gospel, Matthew 22, 15 to 21? Question two, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. Who do you think, what do you think Jesus meant here? What belongs to Caesar and what belongs to God? Question three. Would. Sin is robbing God of what is God's and giving them to Caesar. Remove two there. Sin is robbing God of what is God's and giving them to Caesar. Discuss briefly. And question three, a question four. As the end SARS movement persists and intensifies with sophistication, IT sophistication, nationwide, what is a good Christian citizen expected to do? As the end SARS movement persists and intensifies nationwide, what is a good Christian citizen expected to do? Who is there? Jacob? Okay, Jacob. Please let me attempt question four. Okay. I don't know whether I'm still a young person, but I think... Oh, you're I'm too old. You're too old. <laughs> But as a Christian, number four, in fact, it touch, touches me so deep. As a Christian, um, I have to be part of what is going on. And you're not just a Christian, a Christian citizen. As a Christian citizen, Correct. what is going on is very important that I should be part of it. In fact, we've been part of it. I've been personally part of it. By giving moral support, also... The sophistication you mentioned, we've been highly sophisticated. We've been following it technologically, even sending some credit, some airtime to people who do not have. Everyone be, is doing it. Be careful. It means you are the one of the funders. <laughs> <laughs> it means you are one of the funders. Okay. Not, not, not really, but I mean, it's very important we are part of it. But like you said, it's quite, quite highly coordinated that no one is expected to destroy not. You are supposed to do it as a Christian. That's actually the 
the idea behind the whole thing. Good governance. So if you have to go out of this, then, you know, you are giving a bad example. So as a Christian, Christian citizen, once again, we are expected, I am expected to be part of it fully until the end. The end, we, there's no end in sight yet until what we put on the table will be granted. Good morning. Okay, amen. Round of applause. Yes. Yeah. Add to what Jacob has just said, what Jacob has just answered. Uh, what I take out of today's reading is that God can bring good out of problems as a nation. Even our tragedies as individuals. God can bring good out of any tragic situation. Individual and nation. I also think that the only credit that we can take out of life is our sinfulness. All the other things come directly or indirectly from God. And as a citizen of this country, watching this answers unfold. I think like we did this morning in church here, we should all go pray like we've never prayed before, asking God to use this opportunity to end the travails of this nation. That God may use this opportunity to end, to end may help us use this opportunity to um, end the travails of, of our country. Nation. You know, just last week, um, or the week before, uh, one of us here, the Mecca, I had an interview with him, and I referred to it last Sunday, that he says that the mayor of Chicago once said, never let a serious crisis go to waste. Never let a serious crisis go to waste. We are going through a crisis. Don't let it go to waste. Every crisis is a dangerous opportunity. There is danger, of course. There is risk with what is happening. But there are numerous opportunities for change and for transformation. May we harvest the opportunities for transformation. Give me a round of applause. Yes. What do you think Jesus meant here when what belongs to Caesar and what belongs to God? Okay, um, I feel what belongs, let's say Caesar is like the society, basically. So how you're meant to pay your tax and obey rules and regulations of the society, basically. So give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Then what belongs to God? You belong to God. So um, doing the will of God, worshipping God, um, Giving him reverence, basically. So, so don't give paying yourself... your taxes belong to Caesar, but you who are paying the taxes, you belong to yes. God. So um, in giving Caesar, basically the society, what belongs to Caesar, don't give yourself, as in, don't, don't allow yourself to go to Caesar. Like, the way you give your tax, don't give yourself as tax to Caesar, too. So keep yourself for God. Applause. Pay your tax. Obey civic laws and regulations, just laws and so on, but don't hand over yourself to Caesar. Did you hear that? Hand yourself over only to God. Don't hand over. And we shall discuss, you know, how a lot of people hand themselves over to Caesar. And one of the ways we hand ourselves over to Caesar is obey unjust laws. One of the ways we hand over ourselves to Caesar is conspire with Caesar and collaborate with Caesar to sustain unjust dispensations, oppressive dispensations. That's how we hand ourselves over to Caesar. When we are not ready to take risks, reasonable risks, to fight for justice, and we submit ourselves, and we imperil future generations in a dark tunnel, because we are too afraid to take risks to fight for justice, to fight for equity and fair play, 
then we are handing over ourselves over to Caesar in our church for ages in our Catholic social teaching we have what is called conscientious objection have you heard that before conscientious objection our church says every Christian has the right and indeed the responsibility to disobey unjust, oppressive, sinful instructions from authorities. So if you are a policeman and you are asked to shoot an innocent person, you have the right, you indeed have the obligation to refuse to shoot somebody. Even if it means that you are risking your job and risking your life. That is called conscientious, meaning that in conscience, I object. I object in conscience. You see people now in the U.S. constantly demonstrating against uh, using their tax money to fund abortion. You hear about that? That you use my tax money to fund the LGBT. You use my tax money to fund abortion and people are saying, no, you can't use my tax money. And I don't know if you know the story of the little sisters of the poor. The story of the little sisters of the poor in, the, in, 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 in America who are taking care of a lot of orphanages and poor places and being compelled by government law to do what is against their faith. Conscientious objection says, no, 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 this is against my faith. I can't do this. I can't carry out abortion in our Catholic hospital. This is not possible. Oh, then the government said, then we shall not support your, your hospital if you will not carry out abortion. He said, sorry, that is violating our fundamental rights. It's called conscientious objection. Meaning, there is what is called civil disobedience for just cause. It is not every law that comes from government that is to be obeyed if the law is unjust. If your conscience says that that law is unjust. But, like Martin Luther King Jr., you will be ready to suffer. Right? Like Dietrich Bonhoeffer, you'll be ready to suffer. Dietrich Bonhoeffer stood up against the Nazi regime of uh, Adolf Hitler and his gang. But he was ready to die. He was in prison and wrote those wonderful letters and papers from prison, telling Christians that there is no such thing as cheap grace. That Jesus Christ saved us by his blood, his precious blood. And if we think we are going to live through Christian life, sugar in the morning and sugar in the evening, he says it is not possible. So all of us who are going to live by that principle of conscientious objection, we have to be ready to suffer for it. We have to be ready to pay the price. Our young people have embraced that. And they are out there paying the price, suffering inconveniences, sleeping on the pavement to see a better society. Many of us in the older generation thought that we can have a better society by having all our conveniences. Is it possible? Give her a round of applause. Yes, Mike. I want to attempt question number one. Yes. There is a link between the first reading, the responsorial psalm, and the gospel. Uh, in the first reading, it is established clearly that there is no God besides our God, and that he reigns supreme. He is the one who actually appoints kings and rulers. Even those who do not know him, like Cyrus did not know him. Cyrus was not a Jewish king. He was a Gentile king, and yet God used him, placed him in the place of authority for the sake of the sons of Jacob. And so all authority and all power belongs to God. The supremacy of God over all things. is the All of power and all authority belongs to, to God. God. Even when a pagan king is exercising authority, he is only exercising authority on God's behalf. The gospel, it's, it's interesting that Christ asked, whose imprint is that on the coin? And they told him is that of Caesar's. And he said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God. We can ask the question the other way around. Whose imprint is in our lives as believers, as followers of Christ Jesus? The word of God tells us that we are made in the image and likeness of God. So we have the imprint of God in us. So why we should do our duties to 
to the state authority. We should remember that we carry the imprint of God. And so our entire being, our entire life belongs to God. And is supreme and is the primary you know, obligation, the, or the primary obligation we have is to give ourselves who bear his image and his, his likeness to him totally, irrespective of our duties to state authorities in way of taxes or obeying the laws. And that is why the responsorium says, give to God all glory and power. That's a summary of it. So in all that we do, even in our responsibilities to the state, we should remember that God has the overarching power, is the one that controls everything, is the imprint that we carry as sons and daughters of the kingdom. And we need to offer our lives to him, as Romans says, as a living sacrifice, acceptable unto him. I have told you guys several times that when I wake up in the morning, I sing, O oh Lord my God, when I in some wonder, then sings my soul. But after that, Jesus, I love you. All I have is yours. Yours I am. Yours I want to be, do with me. <clears throat> Meaning that I wake up acknowledging that I belong to you. All I have, all I want to be, belong to you. And I recommend that for you all, that every day you wake up sub submitting yourself to the Lord, recognizing that all of you, me and the tax I have to pay belong to God. God owns all of me. And I give it to God. In actual fact, one of the answers to that question number two, what belongs to Caesar and what belongs to God, actually everything belongs to God, including King Cyrus, including the pagan king, not only the Christian king, also the non-Christian king belong to God. And we have a responsibility to constantly remind every king and everyone in authority that, listen, you are not exercising this authority on your own. This authority, you are exercising it on behalf of someone, God. So you don't have to be a Christian to, to, to obey God, to do the right thing, to be just, to be fair, because you are... How many of you watched the video released a few days ago by Boris Johnson? Boris Johnson released a video a few days ago who says, we are here to serve you. So if people are sick, it is our responsibility to make sure there is health care. Therefore, we are going to um, put in place how many new hospitals and how many, we're going to employ thousands of doctors. We are here to serve you. If education is not working well, we are going to do this and make sure we get experts to revamp the schools. We are here to serve you. If the economy is not working well, he went through all the gamut of the obligations of a leader. Please look for it. Google it. It's just a few days ago released by Boris Johnson. And recognize that I am your servant. I, we use strange words that are not local to us, like somebody is minister, somebody is commissioner. What does minister mean? Servant. Steward, servant. I think we need to be using words. It's like we use word corruption instead of stealing. So many of these things, we, we, it's not clear to our people. We need to use words that are clear to our people that a leader is a servant. And some of you have been able to see how our young people are telling the police, we are paying you. You are to serve and protect us. You are not to kill us. We give you the gun, not to use the gun to kill us. And, and, and in this country, for the past, well, I don't know since when, since colonial times, I don't think the police recognized that. The police were called either the, the police force that is meant to force the people to obey the leaders. And I have discussed once with a senior security personnel who told me that, Father, we are there to protect the leaders. We are there to protect the regime. No, you are there to protect Nigerians. Nigeria and Nigerians, not just the person in power. The kind of orientation our leaders have had and the people who are in the police or SSS or military or whatever is that if a million people will die in order to protect this one leader, that's okay. No, 
We did not buy you guns to use to kill us. We did not elect somebody in power that all of us will begin to serve the person. And our, our young people have begun to sing these songs now. My hope is that after this enterprise of NSAS, we are going to see a major change. My hope is that after this enterprise, those who, who bring themselves up to go for service, they will not be riding SUVs and having 20 cars carrying them to the airport and driving people off the road. This is going to change. The time, the time for change is now. Thank you, Mike. Yes, Helen. What question is remaining? Question number two, even though you have answered it indirectly. Um, sin is robbing God of what is God's and giving them to Caesar. I belong to God. My soul, my heart, my skills, my talents, my time. I belong to God. So the sentence that should come from me should be, for God, I will do everything. But most people say, for this position, I will do everything to get there. And therefore, they go into unpalatable things to do just because they want power. They want money and say, for this money, this million, I must do everything to do it and not for God, I'll do anything for God. So when I wake up in the morning, what do I do? Do I rob God of his, his time? I kneel down to say, God, I thank you for the gift of this day. I thank you for the gift of life. Like you say, tell him that I belong to you. All I have is yours. Yours I am, yours I want to be. And when you say that, it guides what you do. You see a neighbor who is hungry because you've told God, all I have is yours. You reach out to that neighbor. The young ones are teaching us. I was told somebody brought granola to sell. And as a woman, you know, she said that was the only business she could do. Right there, they contributed 2,500,000 okay. immediately. Immediately. And they call, got her phone, called her son, and said, this is your mother. She will never come here to sell granite. Great. They raised 500,000, gave it to the woman, and said, go home. Never yes. come here to sell granite. Yes. Give, yes. Them, give them a round of applause. Yes. Yes, Father, that happens. And I look at, I could just take a trip to Baduma School, near where I stay. There are children who have not been able to come to school because they don't have slippers. I can easily do that. So if I say, God, I am yours, all I have belong to you, I should give it back to God. Not put it for myself because I want society to say I'm a big woman. So when we rob what is God... Is Whether that society says it or not, you are a big woman. Father, I thank God, but God did not give me to keep. The only way I can enjoy whatever God has given me is when I give out, when I give to the poor, when I give to the needy. It is actually yes. uh, that question number three. Please reflect on it, all of you, very seriously. Sin is robbing God of what is God's and giving them, along with what is Caesar's, giving what is God's, giving everything to Caesar. Yeah. Every time we um, violate what belongs to God. Like she began by saying, as a Christian, do you spend time in the presence of God? The time you are supposed to pray, if you are not praying, you are robbing God of the time of that. Do you, she is saying, do you share with other children of God with your endowments? Everything you have and you yourself, you belong to God. And you know that God is like our mothers. He, she, they, our mothers cannot see one child making progress and another suffering. No. They would prefer, they would urge and nudge the one that is doing it. Please help your brother. Even if you say, my brother is lazy, your mom will not be happy until you help your brother. So, if you do not do that, you are robbing God of what is good. You are robbing God of his authority over your life. And every time we commit sin, we, it is like an insubordination. We are telling God, no, you are not my supervisor. You are not the one to dictate to me. Right? Every time, any sin, think of any sin whatsoever, it is robbing God of his due. Father, lastly, I teach, and what I try to tell the young ones, that we, the older ones, have got things wrong. So there's a darkened world. 
but God has given them opportunity to be the light of the world. And you are the light of the world if you do the right things. You don't go and shunt. Shunting is a university when you are lining and you go and cut. You don't do that. You wait your turn. When you see an old person, you help the old person and so on. So there are things you do, not big things. You are the light if you say, I will never, never give bribe. Let it take me, let me give my time. And I tell lecturers too, that we, if we do not train these children well, they go with this darkness into a darkened world. So whatever job you are doing, do it as if you are doing it for God. Because even if one person says, I will never, ever, ever commit you know, adultery because it's wrong, you have helped them. But these children, because parents don't have time, they don't spend time with their, their children, I have spoken to many of the children. I so, parents spending time yes. to train their children is giving God his God, due. Yes. Since God is not going to come down to do the training, God has put it into your charge as Child. parents to train your children. If you do not make time for training your children, you are robbing God of his due. And lastly, I'm a Godmother. And Godmothers have duties. Godmothers have duties. You must find out what your godchildren are doing. You must talk to them. You must encourage them. Or else God is going to ask you, why did you accept to be a godparent if you couldn't do that? Thank you for uh, that. Uh, that. That leads me, thank you. That leads me to talk about how we select sponsors and godmothers. How do you select sponsors for your wedding? It's time for your wedding and then you are a big person. You look for some big person to be your sponsor. Are you selecting somebody that is likely to be able to accompany you? And I tell people who are preparing for marriage, please don't take, don't take somebody who is 70 years old to be your, your, your sponsor. Take somebody who is only a few years older than you in marriage to be your sponsor. Because it's meant to be, the person meant to accompany you through your life by the grace of God. You are baptism. You look for somebody who, who you like. It's not just somebody who you like. Is this somebody who is an example in the Christian faith and who is able to help you, ask after you, ask after that child, accompany that child, help you to raise that child in the church? I mean, people just... We are responsible for a lot of our failures. We are responsible for a lot of our failures. I mean, there are a few examples of sponsors, baptismal confirmation sponsors that have accompanied the people they sponsor all through life. But the majority of cases, some people don't even know who is their sponsor. How many of you know who is your baptismal sponsor? How many of you? Are you in touch with the person? If you are not, it, those of you who, whose sponsors are still alive, my own died many, many years ago. Those whose sponsors are still alive, can you give them a call today? Give them a call today and remind them of their responsibility to accompany you. No, no, this is not a joke. Give them a call today. If you don't have their number, ask for their numbers. Give them a call and remind them that me, I'm trying in my Christian faith. I hope you know it's your responsibility to help me to grow in my Christian faith. And then if we are sponsors of children, Today is the day to ask after them. Understood? May the Lord bless you as you do that. They went to him and said, Teacher, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? And Jesus says, Show me the money for the tax. Whose likeness or inscription is this? And they say, it's Caesar's. Then he says, Render to Caesar what is Caesar's. And to God the things that are God's. Jesus was aware of his interrogator's malice, but he will not be worsted. You can't, you can't defeat him now. So he said to them, show me one of those coins with which you pay the tax. They brought out a one denarius, and he asked, whose face is in this? Whose effigy is it? They answered, Caesar's. And it was the head of Caesar Tiberius. As you know, um, the Jews traditionally don't believe in images. And so, if you check, you discover that Jesus never held money in his hand throughout. Never. And part of the reason is the effigy, the head of Caesar, the head of a pagan king, 
the money they carry around. That's why Jesus constantly talked about money and said that tinted tin. He said to them, then give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. Jesus says, if that is the emperor's head, give to the emperor what is of the emperor. If you are willing to carry the coin which carries Caesar's effigy in your pocket, then you should be willing to give back to Caesar what is his. And then he added, but also give to God what is God's. You must recognize God as the supreme sovereign to whom all hearts of men, the hearts of men and women belong. Give to God what carries God's imprint. And as uh, Mike said, what is it that carries God's imprint? All our, ourselves. Give to God all that is created in God's image. What God wants is not a silver coin, a gold coin. Give to God your heart. Give to God your soul. Give to God a meaningful, purposeful, God-fearing life. Give unto Caesar's what is Caesar's. Give unto God. Give unto God your heart. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Give unto God. Give unto God your hearts. So what the Lord wants is your heart. Not some gold coin, not some silver coin. Give to God a well-organized society. That is why, as Jacob said, we are to be all involved in working for a better organized society because that will help each one of God's children to live responsible, reasonable, uh, dignified lives. Give to God a well-organized society whose laws and policies are in accordance with the fear of God and his divine purpose. It is in recognition of what is going on now. And SARS protests are something that contributes to giving to God his due. That is why in many places today, there is mass at the venue of the gathering. At Lekki, which is the biggest place, at Lekki toll gate, there is mass being celebrated right now. Give unto God what is God's because we recognize leaders of the church, the Archbishop of Lagos recognizes that what is happening now will contribute to giving unto God what is God's. So a well-organized society whose laws and policies are in accordance with the fear of God and his divine purpose. A well-organized society where justice and equity are in place. Right now, there is no justice. There is no equity. Felt very, very sad. Where a very, very intelligent boy who has been top of his class all through, it's time to go back to school and his parent does not have a dime to send him to school. This is a child who would have gotten, I mean, free education, primary and secondary, free education in any civilized society today. Then you have a top level child, top of his class all through his school. It's time to go to school. The parent has no job. The parent cannot send him to school. What a shame. What a shame. During the, the protest, you interview a lot of the young people there, and people are telling you, I have a master's degree. I have a master's degree in chemical, um, chemical engineering. I have a master's degree in organic chemistry. I mean, I saw somebody with master's in organic chemistry doing petty laborer, carrying cement and sand mixing for people in my estate. Mike, isn't it? I think it's organic chemistry. Doing petty labor, carrying cement, carrying that. I mean, there's something more he could do with master's degree in organic chemistry. But that is what we have condemned our young people to. We need a better organized society to give unto God what is God's. Yeah, where justice and equity are in place. Where human rights and dignity reign. This is the worship that God wants. The tax we must pay to God if we are to belong to his kingdom. Yes, Jesus admonishes his adversaries and ourselves. Worry less about what is due to Caesar. Pay more attention to God and the presence of his son in your midst. Render to God the worship that is his. As Christians... We have dual citizenship. We are citizens of our various countries. 
And at the same time, we are citizens of God's kingdom. We have privileges and obligations to our society and to God. We have privileges. We have obligations in each case as citizens of our society and as citizens of the kingdom of God. We must pay tribute to the state. We must pay tribute to God. Jesus' answer indicates that there, are, there, there need not be any conflict in the two. To be citizen, good citizen of our country, good, solidary citizen of our country, and to be good, solidary citizen of the kingdom, there should be no conflict between the demands of the state and the demands of God. Since all authority ultimately belongs to God, and human beings who govern are ultimately accountable to God. See why there should be no conflict? Whoever is governing in accordance with the will of God governs according to the dictates of God. So for me to obey God in a society that is well governed, there will be no conflict. As citizens of our country, we respect constituted authority. We obey just laws. And I have explained that earlier. No one is bound in conscience to obey unjust laws. I mean, people say, oh, that is the law. That is the law. Is that law just? If the law is not just, I am not bound to obey it. It is called conscientious objection. I mean, should they, Felicia, should they make a law that anybody that comes for abortion, you must do it in the hospital? You have a right to say, no, I won't do that. You can sack me if you want. I mean, what, what often happens is that people, people, some people think they have these values, but when it comes to the consequences, when it comes to the consequences, um, I don't know if some of you remember, I think it was in Cross River State, in Calabar areas, years ago, about 20 years ago, in a school of nursing. Some nurses refused to be part of the process of abortion. How many of you remember? Some, some student nurses refused to be part of uh, the clinical teaching of the process of abortion. And they were penalized. People had to come out to say, no, this is what is called conscientious objection. They believe that abortion is murder. So you don't put them down and subject them to the agony of teaching them how to do abortion. Oh, some of you don't know that this thing happened in this country. Obey just laws. Pay taxes for the running of society. And refuse to pay a tax when you think that your tax is not being properly used. And be ready to face the consequences. Uh, many of you know that in America and Europe, when they know that their tax money is being used to fund certain unjust things, certain impure things, they withhold their tax until the government changes that policy. Contribute to the common good. The privilege should help the less privileged. It's part of our obligation. The strong should help the weak. The educated should help the ignorant. How does the privileged help the, the, the less privileged? It is through the tax regimes. In this country, I still say, I don't know whether it has changed in the last one or two years, but if you buy a Volkswagen Beetle or Kia Picanto, Mike, what is your car? Hyundai Picanto. If you buy a Hyundai... Uh, Latifa, it's no longer your car now. Yeah, yeah. Latifa, you have moved on beyond that one. Hyundai, what was it? Hyundai? Eh? Hyundai ISL. I? A small I dot, isn't it? <laughs> if you buy that car or you buy a Lamborghini, in this country we used to register it with the same amount. I hope you know. No, it does not happen in any civilized society. How can you register a 1 million naira car and a 50 million naira car with the same amount? How foolish have we been? How the more privileged help the less privileged is that somebody brings a 50 million naira car, you charge 5, 10 million to register it so that you can use that money to buy buses for those who do not have money to buy cars. 
That is how it is done in all civilized places. But if you do that, the people who make the policies is against them, isn't it? And they protect themselves. They protect themselves. And you know what? The young people who are out on the streets are not just telling the government, think of how to turn the society around. They are working out the modalities. They are beginning to work out the modalities. They are saying, sure, you say you have no money to fund the police properly. Bring the national budget. You see, see what you have voted for um, the assembly. See what you have voted for Aso Rock for maintenance, for cutleries. See what you have voted for newspapers. You can slash it into two and give the police. So the young people are actually concretely taking their pen and pencil and analyzing the budget and telling us where to take the money from. So the ones we were not able to, the ones we didn't know how to do, our young people are doing it. May the Lord bless them. As citizens of God's kingdom, our obligation, worship God and God alone. Reverence God in the neighbor and hold each person as sacred. If those who are in the police those who are in SARS, in kill and go, in whatever department of the security forces, if they reverence everyone as God's image, holding each person as sacred, will they tell you that I will waste you and nothing will happen? I mean, how did we get to that stage where somebody can tell you I will waste you and nothing will happen? And yet, some of these people call themselves Muslims and Christians. Right? How poorly have we educated our people that people do not recognize the sanctity, the dignity, the fundamental rights of each person and that you cannot claim any knowledge of God, any relationship with God if you can even pronounce that from your mouth. I will waste you and nothing will happen even if he doesn't intend to do it. But to utter those things, abominable things from the mouth, it just shows and all of us who are preachers, all of us who are pastors and priests, how poorly have we done our work? Because a lot of these poli policemen are Christians and Muslims. A lot of them are Christians and Muslims. And this is standard in this country and it has been happening forever. That the police will tell you, I will waste you and nothing will happen. How did we get to that stage? It is part of being citizens of heaven to recognize that every human life is sacred. What did I say? Every human life. And the sanctity of human life is not about the life of the rich or the comfortable or the Christian or the Muslim. It is the life of everyone from cradle to grave. To witness to his truth in the midst of falsehood and shine his light in the midst of darkness. We have an obligation as citizens of the kingdom of God to sh constantly shine our light shine our light in the midst of darkness. We live in a society of darkness. Where darkness prevails, we must be beacons of light. We must speak the truth even when everyone is living a lie. To promote human dignity, human rights, justice and equity, peace and non-violence. And where there is no equity, where there is lopsidedness, whether it is in local government between one ward and the other, it's between, in states between one senatorial zone and the other, or federal government. The reason why elections have become such do or die is that we operate a system of the winner takes all. And there is such recklessness that goes about the winner takes all, such recklessness. We say we operate a federation and you can decide to appoint everybody from one side and say, nothing will happen. Well, something is beginning to happen. Something is beginning to happen. We want an end to injustice, an end to lack of equity in our society. Yes, we need to be bearers of God's love and grace. There is no contradiction between the worship of God and being a good citizen. It is a matter of putting first things first. Our faith in God and our worship of him should express itself or should be shown in our service of our neighbor and in our commitment to the common good. So, for the Christian, politics should be seen as faith in action. What did I call politics? 
Bishi, what did you people call that organization that was set up? Is it faith in action or something else? Catholic action. So, politics should be seen as faith in action. Here, we come to celebrate our faith on our knees. We celebrate our faith by kneeling down to pray, by praising God. But when we go out there in the political sphere, we put that faith that we celebrate on our knees here, we put it in practice, in action outside for the economy, for the politics, for the way society is organized. Life is a unity between body and soul, secular and religious. So our belonging to God is inseparable from our belonging to this world. In a state run according to God's will, failure to be a good citizen is failure to be a good Christian. Uh -huh. In a state run according to God's will, to, to fail to be a good citizen is to fail to be a good Christian. To disobey just laws made for the harmonious existence and smooth running of society is to disobey God. To cheat the state is to cheat fellow citizens. And to cheat fellow citizens is to cheat God. Do you understand? Or you don't make the link? To cheat the state is to cheat fellow citizens. Because if you state st steal state money, there will not be enough money to take care of SARS, to take care of the police, to take care of security agencies. They will be living in decrepit uh, barracks as we have. Now, if you do not cheat the state, there will be enough resources to use to provide the amenities, the infrastructure. If you cheat fellow citizens, you are cheating God. So this thing about uh, uh, if they say, oh, people, people, are, say, people are, are cheating the state, are stealing, committing fraud, and are coming to church to do Thanksgiving is nonsense. Because it's, I mean, how can you cheat the state, cheat your fellow citizens, and you say you are coming to give thanks to God? That's useless. Will God accept such Thanksgiving? The state has a role, but the power of the state is limited. It does not supplant the power of God. In admonishing us to give to Caesar what is Caesar's, it is assumed that Caesar's claim will be just, isn't it? When Jesus said, give to Caesar's what is Caesar's, it is assumed that the claim of Caesar would be just. If the claim of Caesar is not just, I have no obligation. That is what is called conscientious objection. Jesus wasn't giving Caesar a blank check, no. Caesar does not possess anything independent of God. Everything belongs to God, including Caesar himself. To ask Christians to give to Caesar what is Caesar's is to assume that those in authority will recognize that their power and authority is derivative and only relative to the power and authority of God, the supreme sovereign. All exercise of authority and power must be evaluated in the light of God's will and God's plan. The political arena must always be subjected to moral and religious evaluation. Whatever is done in economics, whatever is done in politics, it must be subjected to moral and religious evaluation constantly. If Caesar, Caesar is subservient to God, then his laws and policies will be in accord with God's will. If there is a clash between our obligation to God and the demands of the state, this Christian should have no doubt which comes first. Huh? The Christian should have no doubt. So, for far from being a dirty game, politics should be seen as faith in action. It is now time for us to get into politics. Chichi, that's what you were saying last week. It is now time for everybody to carry a party card. It is now time for us to get involved. Don't say politics is a dirty game. Get into it. We should have not only Bishi involved in politics. We should have everyone. Our faith in God can spur us on to a passionate commitment to the welfare of our society. With what is happening now, I can imagine that our thousands, our millions of young people are going to make a major impact in politics henceforth. On the relationship between his religion and his politics, Mahatma Gandhi says, I am in politics because I cannot separate life from belief. Because I believe in God, I have to enter politics. Politics is my service of 
Again, he says, because I believe in God, I have to enter politics. Politics is my service of God. Julius Nyerere is one of the best examples of a devout Catholic who went to mass every day, by the way, every day. And an African statesman who tried to put his faith into action in the conduct of politics. That is why some people are promoting his cause, sainthood. Because everybody saw that he didn't live a perfect life, but he tried. And what we have lost in this society, the Ujama, I am because we are. And since we are, therefore I am. The African communalism, he tried to bring it into politics. But they crushed it. Selfish capitalist people crushed it. But he wanted an African kind of governance that included everybody. Doug Hamas Jolt, the first Secretary General of the United Nations. I mean, those of you who, those of you who read, and I encourage you guys to read. I encourage you to read. Please grab any of the books of this man you get. The most, the most uh, celebrated of his books is Markings. M-A-R-K-I-N-G-S. Markings. It is not just a, it is not a political book. It's actually a deeply spiritual human enterprise. That book, Markings. Doug Hamas Joel, first Secretary General of the United Nations, says, what greater vocation is there than to assume responsibility for national and international affairs, to work for peace and justice in the world, for the betterment of human life for all? No life is more satisfactory than that of selfless service to your country or to humanity. We must obey God rather than men. Christians must always act in accordance with their enlightened conscience. The Christian in politics or public office is called upon to give credible witness to his or her values. Yes, end SARS now. End police brutality now. End killings now. End robbery now. When it comes to taking a, a public stand and voting for or against unjust, oppressive, or morally objectionable policies or outright bad governance, the Christian must always obey God rather than man. So let me call it, and you say we must obey. When it comes to police brutality and extrajudicial killings, we must obey God rather than man. Gross injustice and inequities in our social political setup, we must obey God rather than man. The senseless killing of innocent people across the country by Boko Haram, headsmen, bandits, and kidnappers, we must obey God rather than man. The unrelenting corruption and looting of public resources, we must obey God rather than man. Monumental gap between the haves and the have-nots. We must obey God rather than man. The mortgaging of present and future generations of Nigerians on account of clueless and or insensitive leadership. We must obey God rather than man. Yes. These are the images of our young people in the last few days. And SARS now. The change is now. And Boko Haram now and headsmen violence now declare designate killer headsmen as terrorists stop the kidnappings kidnapping must end when now and not banditry now end poverty and reduce inequality leave no one behind stand up Speak out, Sorosoke. When? Now. Bring back our girls. When? Now. Say no to human trafficking. We say no to war. Help end child prostitution. Say no to rape and kidnap. When? Now. The true meaning of NSAS, we are told. You know, the meaning of NSAS is changing every day, isn't it? Aha. Uh -huh. The few the few ones, this one is a few days old. And uh, education and economic, uh, okay, NSAS means education and economic free, uh, reform, right? It means reform of the Nigerian constitution. It means accountability for the debts we are incurring. It means security reform. It means reform of anti-people policies, cancel them. It means restructuring. It means safe cost of governance. This list is going to increase in the next few days, I tell you. 
When, when is the time for change? Now. Examples of people who obeyed God rather than men. Joseph, you remember? In the book of Genesis. Daniel, you remember? The prophet Daniel, who said, I am, count me out of this when the elders, the corrupt elders were condemning Susanna. The seven Maccabean brothers who said we would rather die than be corrupted by the society. Peter and John, Stephen, Thomas More, the martyrs of Uganda, yes, and Franz Jagastata and Dietrich Bonhoeffer that I have constantly called here, the one who wrote the book, The Cost of Discipleship. Dietrich Bonhoeffer says, we are not to simply bandage the wounds of the victim. Everybody likes the people who go and bandage the wounds of the victim, isn't it? Beneath the wheels of injustice, we are to drive a spoke into the wheel itself. It is not enough to go and bandage the wounds of those who are victims of injustice. We are to drive a spoke into the wheel, to stop the wheel crushing the poor. He says, silence in the face of evil is itself evil. To be neutral in the face of oppression is to be on the side of who? The oppressor. I mean, if somebody has his leg on top of the head of somebody, and you sit down and you say, you know, I am not political, I am neutral. What are you doing? You are on the side of the oppressor. Not to act is to act. God will hold us responsible. Summary. The Lord's is the earth and his fullness. Psalm 24. All authority comes from God. Romans 13.1. Obedience to constituted authority is obedience to God. Peter, 1 Peter 2.17 In the face of conflict between God and Caesar, it is better to obey God rather than men. Proverbs 28.1, Acts 4.19, and Acts 5.29 And do not fear those who kill the body, and after that there is nothing else they can do. Fear him who, after killing the body, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, fear him. Luke chapter 12, verse 4 to 6. And more passages. The honor due to constituted authority, Exodus 22, 28, and Acts 23, 5. Civic righteousness, Proverbs 11, 11, Proverbs 14, 34, and Proverbs 29, 2, Isaiah 32, uh, 16. And finally, our civic duties, Matthew chapter 7, 17, verse 27, Titus chapter 3, verse 1, and 1 Peter 2, 13, 14. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you, we glorify your holy name for your many blessings. Thank you for your love and your goodness. Thank you for the developments in our country in the last few days, especially the courage of our young people to begin to ask for justice, to begin to ask for equity, to ask for security, to ask for better opportunities for themselves and their children. May your name be praised forever. We thank you for the peace that has accompanied this enterprise. We thank you that you have protected us from any terrible damage, even though we have unfortunately lost a few people. Lord, we ask you that this enterprise may remain peaceful. Grant the organizers the grace to continue to call on you. Yes, in the last few days, there has been prayer vigils calling on you to guide this process. Guide this process for us. Help us to recognize that for a better society under God, we have each one of us work to do. As we do that work, Lord, help us to do everything by your inspiration and by your grace, end it peacefully for the betterment of our society. Through Christ our Lord. Let's rise. I believe in one God. Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for salvation, came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and was the man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in one Holy Spirit, Lord of the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Let us now turn, brothers and sisters, to our almighty God, the overarching controller of the universe, and pray for our church, for the world, and for our troubled country, Nigeria, that he may have pity on us and help us overcome the many social, political, economic, and especially security challenges that we are presently confronted with. Let us pray for the Holy Father, Pope Francis, for the bishops, and all Christian leaders, that they may remain faithful to the true gospel of Christ, even in a world of increasing materialism, secularism, and violence, where many are daily discarding the fundamental values and godly principles that used to hold the church and society together. We pray, O oh Lord. For all Christians, that as agents of the kingdom values of Christ, we may never be afraid to stand up and be counted on the side of the Christian virtues of love and compassion, as well as truth and justice, which the modern world tends to ignore. We pray, O oh Lord. For all who are in positions of authority and governance, that recognizing that all authority comes from God, they may see themselves as only stewards entrusted with the welfare of the people. We pray, O oh Lord. For the success of the ongoing nationwide ENSAS protests, that the leaders may be quick to hear the cry of the young population of Nigerians who see very little hope for the future. May those in authority be inspired to respond urgently with far-reaching reforms in our social, political, economic, and security arrangements. We pray, O oh Lord. For the evangelization and leadership development programs of Luke's Terra Leadership Foundation and for the intentions of its partners and benefactors. We pray, O oh Lord. Let us now add our private intentions in silence. We pray, O oh Lord. Let us now ask for the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. God is with you. Thy love all men. The fruit of your own Jesus. All merciful Father. Teach us to serve you with utmost commitment and devotion. Amidst the many challenges of life, may we be daily inspired to obey God rather than man, and thus give credible witness to the gospel. Grant this through Christ our Lord.
raise sisters and brothers that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Amen. Grant, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what, uh, through the purifying acts of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of our faith, save us. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Ignatius and Anselm, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Say forgive those who trespass. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you. Bow to each other. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. 
grant this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you. May he let his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May the Lord uncover his face before you and grant you his peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ.